So just a little bit about myself. I grew up in Portland, Maine. Uh, I, I came out to Maryland on a baseball scholarship and met my wife in school. And that's how I ended up out in this area. Um, I, I graduated uh, college uh, with a background in finance. Uh, and I worked at various firms from TD Bank to TD Ameritrade and brokerage to Merrill Lynch and asset management. And then lastly, T. Rowe, uh, T. Rowe Price and asset management. Um, and uh, the entire time I was going through that process, I had uh, always wanted my own business, but I had kind of invested in this career in finance with the different securities licenses and the time that was put in for the the furthering my education with an MBA and a master's of science in finance. Um, so when I was at T. Rowe Price, I dealt a lot with self-employed people on a daily basis because I was dealing with their SEP IRAs and simple IRAs and individual 401ks and uh, KEO plans, et cetera. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I was seeing, you know, kind of the, the lives that some of these business owners were living and it was something that I had aspired for. And so I, I started looking at businesses I felt I could run while at uh, T. Rowe Price. And um, I, I landed on uh, a quick lube in Harrisburg. I, I would look at biz by sell on a daily basis. And I was looking at businesses that I felt could be run uh, without a skilled uh, manager so that if that person leaves, they can't, you're not beholden to any one key employee. So it was important for me to have a business that I felt there'd be continuity. And, um, and so we, uh, we, we got some heavy seller financing and I had no intention of leaving my job at T. Rowe Price. And I kind of had all these ideas of what I thought the industry should be. So I started putting my ideas forward mm. on the business and, uh, and it grew. And so a lot of what it was, was reading a lot of the reviews on Yelp for some of the competitors and kind of reverse engineering the things that I thought uh, the customers in the space wanted. And, um, and so that's how the business grew. And we opened a second location and a third location and, uh, and we grew and we grew. And I think that the model resonated with a lot of people. And because of that, we were able to get to uh, 10 stores before we even thought about uh, franchising. And so when we got to that 10th store, we reached out to different groups to help us with franchising to make sure we did it the right way. And Fran Devco had a lot of experience in the automotive space. And so we, we ultimately landed with them as our, our as our FSO or franchise service organization. And, um, and then we went to work on selling franchises. And so uh, the model has obviously resonated. We've done a good job of selling units and, uh, while there's some uphill battles when it comes to new construction and commercial real estate, we've been able to uh, navigate those waters by uh, by finding uh, conversion opportunities in different places. And uh, we are way ahead of where some of the other emerging brands are in our space in terms of where they were at this point. And uh, it's been a really good process. So uh, with that, I will go straight to Q&A. Any questions you have, Rick, I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, no, that was a pretty good thing. My, my, my history is a little bit on, on car work and I owned a, my family owned a big bakery in Arizona and then we made it duplicatable and we produced donuts in Houston and in Charlotte and in Chattanooga and in Orlando. And so we kind of did a similar thing. We just, we, it took us a long time to do it. <laughs> it took us 30 years to, to make it duplicatable. The technology had to come in order for us to be able to duplicate it. But um, I, I'm interested in, you know, what, what's your average uh, oil change time? Oh, price-wise, Rick? No, time-wise. Oh, yeah, bay time, bay time will definitely depend on the crew and the staffing, but with two guys, we can get a car that has no skid plate and a spin on filter, you know, fully drained within the first four minutes and then uh, filter back on, drain plug back on with another couple minutes. And most cars are getting out the door under under 10 minutes pretty, pretty easily. 
All right. All right. I, 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 and I've kind of uh, done, done my own re- little bit of research on, on the business. And I, I love it. As far as the business model, I, I think it's great because uh, I've dealt with cars and there's a lot of times there's nothing wrong with the car. I just want an oil change. <laughs> you know, that's all, that's all I want is just an oil change. Just give me an oil change. Team. Let me get on my way. But that day. They want to try to get you to do all these other things in the vehicle that you really don't need to do. With my history of vehicles over the years, you know. So, uh, so uh, I, there's uh, how how fast do locations usually open up? I'm sorry, Rick. Could you repeat that? I said, how how fast do locations typically open up after once you get the ball rolling, kind of thing? It, it depends on. Um... It depends on what route you take. So we have a few different approaches to getting people open. Conversions are the quickest because the infrastructure is already in place. So if there's a quick loop facility with pits and drive through already in place somewhere in the Chandler market, then we can get you open very quickly, talking about less than three months. Um, if we're building a brand new building, then that process is highly dependent upon a myriad of factors, including that local township's ability to move the paperwork forward and our ability to get them the information they need to build the building. So, you know, we have people in our system that have been in the system for a year and they're just breaking ground construction wise on their, on their property because it's a new building. Um, we are offering a car wash conversion model that could mitigate that time and and be half as long as new construction or even a quarter as long as new construction um so we have a few different ways to to uh mitigate that concern but it really comes down to when you come into the system we ask you what's what's your priority a brand new building getting open fast or uh your your rent rate you know what is the most important thing to you because um depending on what that is we can kind of work around it Right, and you 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 have uh, people that will purchase the building and it just be leased, right? Yeah, we have a lease. We have a lease back program that has worked really well for uh, some of our open and operating franchisees, where they've purchased the building and then leased it back to the franchisee for the total cost of the security deposit and uh, first month's rent. All right, and actually, if the right. building is in need of repairs in the instance of our Gulfport, Mississippi franchisee, um, there was an additional $50,000 added on and it just gets tacked on to the monthly rent price um, for, for improvements. Right. Uh, what's your, what's your typical like break even? How many oil changes? I can't yeah, discuss if- financials per the FTC. So you have to defer to the uh, item 19. Um, I, if you would like to talk to our, uh, Phoenix Mesa franchisee, they actually are not bound by any of the FTC rules, so I can't make any financial representations, but um, right. our franchisee in Mesa certainly can. And he's been open, he's been open six months now, so he's probably got a pretty good grasp of where things are going. The, uh, the typical ramp up for a quick lube is, you know, it, traditionally for the other brands is about two years, but, you know, we really feel as though our ramp up period can be anywhere from nine to 12 months um, because of our lower overhead. Um, there's some other factors there as well. Our our, uh, our franchisee in Mesa uh, definitely overpaid his manager to, but it, it's always a, it's always a give and take. He, you know, he's a lawyer by trade, so he didn't want to worry and have headaches. And so he was willing to pay the manager who was a very qualified, very deserving really good employee, um, a, a good salary. And in exchange for that, you know, he has less he headaches. He didn't have to do anything, right? He didn't have to do much. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. I totally, totally understand that. I understand the employee side of it. We, are, we, we went from one location, uh, each location having about 100, 100 employees. So to go down to two or three employees is, is a big deal. <laughs> And we and we ran seven days a week, twenty four hours a day, just nonstop. So, uh, so the, the 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 opportunity there to have a little bit different life is good. I am, uh, I'm look, look forward to it. Uh, so there is a car wash that's by me. It's in Mesa. It's not in Chandler. Uh, it's self service car wash that shut down, but it's it was three days. You guys allow a three day. 
So in the instance of a self-service car wash, we're, we're probably going to convert only a couple of the bays and it's the ones that are next to the equipment room. And then um, the other bay would be utilized as a self-service business. Um, the only thing you got to check is if it is in Mesa, uh, there are protected territories. So, um, and, and the Pierces are a multi-unit um, franchisee. So they actually have two Mesa territories. So we just have to look at the map. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Rick, just send me the address. Um, I, and I, I think I, I think I did already. Oh, okay. I apologize. I'll take a look. Okay. Yeah, I think I did. And, and uh, anyway, uh, that was, I, I just, just so happened I drove past one and it had a fence around it. And I was like, oh, there you go. Right there. But it was, it was three days. And so I didn't know if you guys, you guys only allow two days, one or two days. No it doesn't bigger. make sense to have three bays. Uh, it would it would hinder the customer experience, unless you're planning on staffing five plus people. Having three bays will only uh, diminish the customer experience. Right, right, all right. Uh, all right. What is it typically? I I don't know. It typically costs to start up. What's the what's the depending? Say say I went into. Uh, lease the building back. Do a lease on a building. So the way that it's currently set up is ten percent of the construction costs. So if you did a brand new building, that ended up being three hundred thousand dollars. Your monthly rent would be twenty five hundred dollars. That's uh, three hundred thousand divided by uh, twelve, which is the thirty thousand divided uh, thirty three hundred thousand times point one zero, which is thirty thousand divided by twelve, which is the twenty five hundred dollar monthly payment. Um, the item seven, which Michael will go over with you. Um, that, ex that explains all of the other things such as the, uh, the furniture, the equipment, the signage and how it's broken down piece by piece to be the cumulative cost of, of building the business. All right. Yeah. All right. I haven't, I haven't had time to read over that, uh, the FDR, is that what it is? F FDD. Uh, yeah, that's, FD, yeah. I haven't had yeah, time to read over it, uh. So, um, I know there's stuff in there that I need to read. I just haven't, haven't I, I'm just so busy right now. <laughs> yeah, we can, Rick, we can do a, we can do a call, another call on that. It probably, I know you want to phone the last time, get a, get a screen up if you can. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know if, if you, I know we talked about <clears throat> you potentially coming to the discovery day. Um, uh, yeah, I won't be able to, not this month. Okay. Okay. Yeah. December's right. a bad month. Yeah. Lots of lots of Christmas and family stuff. Um well and church stuff. Lots of church stuff. Well, because if Rick does come in person in, in January, he's got a fascinating story. Um the family like you as dad started out with one location like you did in Harrisburg making donuts. And uh, they built it up, uh, I think, over 30 years. And uh, Rick, what was how many donuts were one of the production facilities making? Is it 10,000 a day? <laughs> 160,000. 160,000 donuts. Yeah, 160,000 um, donuts every day. We were producing for a thousand over a thousand locations every day. Yeah, incredible. And delivering to over delivering to over a thousand locations every day. Just in that's just, just Arizona. Yeah, we were That's we were up over forty five hundred uh, locations delivering to on a nightly basis, and they they never stop working twenty four seven. So, Costa, I think that's what's attractive to Rick is the manager centric model. You know, you set up. Right, right. I I I would be a definite owner owner operator. I would be involved heavily involved in in it until until the the second or third one came along. And then, then, it, and then it couldn't be involved in the one location, but I would be involved in the business for sure. I'm not, I'm not one that's going to sit aside and let something crumble. Because that's, yeah. that's what happens a lot of times. Anyway. Awesome. Nobody cares more. Nobody would care more than me. Yeah, that's, that's important. 
for business yeah, yeah, yeah. in general. For sure, for sure. And that's uh, it's unfortunate, but you know nobody cares more than the owner usually. So. Well, and <clears throat> Rick, what will be what will be good about Phoenix? Um, you know, certainly we we'll, we'll look at the locations, but we've got um, two other gentlemen that are going to be developing units up on the in fact i think three up on the northwest side of phoenix so <clears throat> the brand is going to grow um, yeah, yeah, yeah which well, will take, be nice. take take fives have kind of taken off here they're they're ones that are definitely starting off they're growing pretty fast yeah so. cost actually has a good background on take five um a slightly different model, but a lot uh -huh. of private equity money. I don't know, cost if you'd like to just share on a, for a minute or two some some of the differences. Yeah, I mean, Take Five is pretty close to the traditional quick loop model. They still have the high pressure upselling side of it. They still have the employees that have to look over their shoulder because they might get fired for not selling enough stuff. But um, you know, they're they're. They're driven, they're a publicly traded company now under the Driven Brands banner. So they've got a lot of money behind them. They're driven by acquisitions. So, um, you know, they're losing a ton of money at the moment because they're just trying to buy a ton of oh. locations. But right. the, the individual stores may not be losing money, but the the, the parent company is through their acquisitions. Um, there's plenty of good take fives and there's some really, really bad ones. So it's a lot like any business, you know, and, and like you, like you said, Rick, it also sometimes depends on how involved the owner is, you know? So, right. um, right. in any franchise that's, that's highly dependent on, on that part of the equation. So. Right. We, we partnered up with, uh, owners of Dunkin' Donuts, uh, 10 years ago, uh, and and they had more money than we did. <laughs> we called ourselves the hillbillies from Mesa, Arizona, that knew how to make some donuts. <laughs> like that, that's what we were. We were just a family that we just worked. That's all. That's all we did. We just worked really hard every day, and we were in super heavily involved. And and so when we when we partnered up with these franchise owners, of course they had they had deeper pockets than we did, and so we were able to grow. And so I. I understand there's there's money to be made in the franchise world for sure. Yeah, uh, what, for sure. Is, is, is the royalty just a automatic seven percent, whatever you're making? Yeah, six and a half. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. All right. Uh, how, for, is there a, is there a time limit on that? Or no. No. Yeah, what the, do you mean a time limit? All right. All right. Yeah, the um, uh, just to go over the FTD again, <clears throat> Rick, the uh, franchise agreement's fifteen years. Fifteen years. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, it's fifteen years. That's that's based on revenue. Um, and you know the business is yours. You you have the ability if you you know at some point want to sell it, you can do that. Um, we we've, we've got tra transfers available. Uh, if you you know want to hand it over to someone else in the family, certainly. You know we can make adjustments to the uh to the franchise agreement right we should we probably get your whole family involved and you can build up a you know build up the brand in in and around phoenix uh yeah that's what i would like if they would if they would get involved you know let's see but everybody everybody has their own different thoughts we, we were my dad bought the business, so everybody got involved with the business we had. But now, now that there's opportunity to have different businesses, there everybody seems to have different ideas. So it's, it's it's a little bit of a challenge. But if I can, if, if they can show, uh, you know, what it's making up there. Right now, we're in most in real estate, and our real estate typically makes about six percent year over year, and that's not enough for us. We need to make more. <laughs> so getting involved in another business where we actually own the business rather than just real estate and, and rental properties, yeah. um, it needs to be something else. And so if, the, if, the, if it's 10, 15, 20% that we're making year over year, well, that's a lot better. 
<laughs> and we still have the rental property. So yeah. it, that's still there. So. But anyway, yep. so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. And I, and I need to read through those so I understand the documents a little bit better. Yeah, we can have a meeting. On, we can have a meeting on that. So you can answer some of my questions. OK, well, we've got time. I, I think let's, you know, <clears throat> let's target for you to come meet Costa and, uh, and his team in January. January. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Weather, weather permitting. <laughs> right. Right. I know. I, I shouldn't tell you that where I'm at right now. It's 57 degrees. It's a yeah. little bit cloudy. We had some rain out the other day. so It kind of got a little chilly. But yesterday we hit 70 degrees. So. Well, you, you can give Costa another reason to come out to Phoenix to come visit you. Right. There's yeah. another reason right there. Come out no here kidding. to say hello. Get some <laughs> golfing in. Uh, get some go golfing in. We don't golf on snow here. We don't golf on nice green grass. Uh, uh, yeah. I always tell people I never had to shovel the Arizona sun. It never, it never happened once. So. But I have shovel snow in other states, and that's not fun. Well, nope. never used to it. Yeah, I'll um, you and I will we'll set up a we'll do a couple more calls on the territory that uh, car wash, and uh, we'll run through the uh, item the initial cost structure item seven, and I'll talk to you about the the three options in more depth. Uh, but I I know you've got your site set on that car wash. I'll take a look at the address, see if we've got um, you know sufficient distance. Uh, well, I mean, I, 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 I've found some other locations, uh, grocery stores with big, nice parking lot, corner corner is still completely open kind of thing. Um, I found some of those, too. Uh, I just don't know. Do you guys do, you guys do any freestanding, like, it, its own thing, like corner lot? Yep. Yeah, we do. Yeah. That's, <clears throat> that's the kiosk model, development on the right. pad. And hey, Michael, I've, a... I've, got a, I've got a hop. Okay. All right, uh, we'll see you guys. Hey, no, Rick, no, thanks no. for your time. I appreciate it. Look forward to yeah, meeting you. you. Yep. All right. Okay, bye, bye, bye. bye Rick. We'll chat soon.